Okay guys, let's continue our discussion on reading chemical formula and balancing equations. So we're gonna work through two examples together, one a little bit simpler than the other. So try to follow along with me. So here we have a chemical equation for how hydrogen and chlorine react to make hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid is stomach acid, okay? So if I wanted to represent this with my, um, my, my little cubes. Um, H2 would look like this. So it would have two atoms of hydrogen chemically bonded in a compound. We would have Cl2, okay? And our product would be HCl. Now, if we were just doing the word formula of hydrogen and chlorine react to make HCl, that'd be fine. But since we're trying to write a chemical equation for it, we've got to make sure that it's balanced, that it's a complete formula. And in this case, it's not because in the reactants, I have two of each compound, but over here, I'm missing some cubes. Now we talked earlier, we can't change subscripts. So I can't just pull these apart because then we would end up with something completely different. But what I can do is change the coefficient or the number of actual molecules that I'm de dealing with. And in this case, since this side is less than this side, because four is greater than two, I'm gonna add a molecule over here. So I'm gonna add an HCl molecule. And there it is. And when I do that, it actually balances out. I have two hydrogen over here and I have two hydrogen over here. I have two chlorine over here, and I have two chlorine over here. So what we need to do is change the coefficient. We're just gonna sneak a two in there. So now we have hydrogen and chlorine react to make hydrochloric acid. And so this would be the correct way to write that. Let's try a more difficult one. So here we have the formula for how ethane C2H6 reacts with oxygen to make carbon dioxide and water. And if you'll notice here, there's two products, but that's not gonna change our process any. We're still gonna have to balance this out. And right now it's not balanced because I have two carbon over here, but I only have one carbon over here. So we're gonna have to do some work. Now in this case, carbon is gonna be represented by black. Hydrogen is gonna be represented by red. Oxygen is going to be represented by white. So we're going to have three different colors that we're going to be dealing with. Okay. So when we're working through this, we're going to make sure that we're keeping things consistent. Okay. So let's model what's here. Okay. Let's just model it. So here is C2H6. So I've got my two blacks. I've got my six reds. I've got my O2. I've got my CO2 and I've got my H2O, okay? So we have two carbon atoms on the left. So we need two carbon dioxide molecules on the product side so that each side has two carbon atoms. That element would be balanced. So we're just gonna add that on there. We have six hydrogen atoms in the reactant. So we need six hydrogen atom in the products and we can get this by having three water molecules. So now we have C2H6 plus O2 makes two CO2 and three H2O. Now we have seven oxygen atoms in the products. So seven in the product, four from the CO2 and three from the H2O. That means we need seven oxygen atoms in the reactants. However, because oxygen is always in a pair, we can only get an even number of oxygens at a time. And we can achieve this by multiplying the other coefficients by two. So that means what we need is two of this one. We need to multiply this by two. And we need to multiply this by two. By multiplying everything else by two, we don't unbalance the other elements. And now we get an even number of oxygen atoms in the product, 14 in total. We can get 14 oxygen atoms on the reactant side 
by having seven oxygen molecules. So we'll just add those pieces in there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So now we have two C2H6 reacting with seven O2 to make four CO2 and six H2O. So let's go back and try that one more time. Let's look at it one more time, okay? Take all of these pieces out, okay? So C2H6O2, CO2H2O. We have two carbon atoms. We need to have two here, okay? The element is balanced. We have six hydrogen atoms, so we need to add some over here. So now we have C2H6 and O2 to make two CO2 and three H2O. On this side, we have seven oxygen atoms, four from CO2 and three from H2O. That means we need seven oxygen atoms in the reactants but we can't do that because they always come in pairs. To fix that, if we multiply everything by two, then we'll be able to get an even number. So one times two is two, two times two is four, three times two is six. So now We've increased the number of everything, but we're still short oxygen atoms right here. So now when we look over here, we have two, four, six, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 oxygen atoms. So all I have two right here, so I need 12 more or six pairs of oxygen. So one, two, so our final formula looks like this. 2C2H6 reacts with seven oxygens to make four carbon dioxides and one, two, three, four, five, six H2O. Now that's more, that's one of the more complicated ones that we would look at that would have much bigger numbers, but you can always model and you can use charts and you can use um, all sorts of different tricks to figure it out. I'm a very visual person, so I tend to draw pictures to help me. Um, but that's it in a nutshell, is just making sure that whatever's on the left ends up on the right. It's very much like balancing equations in math, except we have a lot more letters in chemistry.